Once somebody starts using their internal guidance system, there are some very key questions that begin to come up in their mind. And one of them is, isn't this just positive thinking? If I have a positive thought, I'm going to feel good. And if I have a negative thought, I'm not going to feel good. Well, we have a listener who has sent us a letter asking that exact question. And I'm going to share with you my answer because it isn't about positive or negative thinking. It's actually more profound than that the kinds of guidance that you can get on your thoughts. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome, fabulous person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow. Flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise. And I'm your host, Zen Cryer to Brook, stress as guidance expert. All right. I'm going to just say this is from A. Her name is her initial A. And And here's her letter. Hi, Zen. Thanks again for putting out your podcast. I find them very supportive in helping me develop my relationship with my own IGS, internal guidance system. I was wondering if you could put together a podcast talking about the differences between wishful thinking and truthful thoughts. Here's why I'm asking. I'm in a tense relationship with my my ex, and he's developed some potentially life-threatening problems. When I have the thought he's going to die soon, I open significantly. Part of me thinks this is wishful juvenile thinking because I believe my life will be better with him no longer a part of it. But it could also be the truth. Then I judge myself for having the thought in the first place because it's not right to have these thought kinds of thoughts, wishing death upon someone else, and I close. Hmm. As always, your insights and guidance are much most appreciated. All right, so here's the thing. Your IGS works in two ways. In this, in this situation. One is, if you're having a thought, it will give you guidance directly on that thought, an opening or closing sensation. Now, if you don't know what your internal guidance system is or opening or closing, go to zeninamoment.com. On the homepage, I walk you through a video where you can feel your internal guidance system for yourself. It's something that's physically been with you since you were born. It's a part of who we are that I've been uncovering for 17 years, and it's pretty amazing and fabulous as a tool to use in your life. Anyways, so When you get an expanded feeling in the central area of your body between your throat and your upper solar plex, that's an opening. And when you get a contracted feeling in that area, feels like a lump in the throat, anxiety or stress in the chest, a sick feeling up in the solar plex area, kind of a churning in your tummy, that is a closing. And when you're open, that means what you're thinking is true or going to happen or more true. Or when you're closed, that tight feeling, it's not true or not going to happen. And people hear me say that. And that's a very simplified way to say this. The reason why this is important is you can have an unpleasant thought that opens you, such as he's going to die soon. It is an unpleasant thought. But if it opens you, it's more true for you to be thinking that thought. That is the the direction you're being guided to hold, okay, To, to think more thoughts in that train of thought. Now, the other thing is that you can have an unpleasant thought that opens you, such as it's not right to have these thoughts wishing death upon someone. I'm not hearing you wish death upon someone, eh? What I'm hearing is you're looking at what's happening to him and you're holding the thought and that thought is true. But I'm not sitting here seeing you reminisce and, you know, go over and over in your head, I wish he would die, I wish he would die, I wish he would die. That thought may actually close you, okay? Or it may open you. You may actually get an opening because it's true. You wish he would die. But the thing is this, is that, you can also have a pleasant thought saying, I'm going to win a million dollars on the lotto and close, right? Or you can say, I'm going to win a million dollars and open. The lottery is a really good one for me to explain this in. We're given two kinds of thoughts from our IGS. One is what I call the carrot or the breadcrumb approach. You know, the carrot at the end of the stick leading the donkey. <laughs> no, I'm not calling you a jackass, but <laughs> the carrot at the end of the stick. Sometimes we are having thoughts in our head that are so different from what we should be thinking, what our divine guidance would have us be thinking, that it uses carrot thoughts to lead us into a direction to an ultimate conclusion of where we need to be. A breadcrumb approach as well. You know, one breadcrumb, then the next breadcrumb, then the next breadcrumb. We can also, it also gives us guidance on what we're generally thinking. Now, what I have found over the years is that, for instance, somebody may get an opening about buying a house or winning the lotto. And the thoughts that occur leading up to the buying of the house or the thoughts and actions that occur in, you know, talking about winning the lotto, the conversation or the actions that needed to be taken were what were important, not the end goal. Now, I know this sounds like a gray area, but your IGS is trying to get you into your divine purpose. And it's going to do that as, as best it can with the thoughts that you're producing. All right. So... If you deciding to buy a home opens you, 
there's saving money, getting your credit cards cleared up, working on your credit, looking around and, and getting rid of some of your stuff, organizing your life around where you want to go, what kind of school do you want your kids to be in. There's all kinds of actions that get taken. Now, what I found is that this at the end, sometimes people get to the end of all of that and they suddenly close about buying a home. The, the timing isn't right or the market isn't right for purchasing a home. And they come to me and they say, but Zen, I opened it buying a house and now when I go to actually buy a house and I'm already, I'm closing. It's because all those actions needed to be taken and either something is off or the timing is different or it was that your IGS was leading you to get all of these taken, things taken care of because there's something else that those things have to be in place for and that was the only way it could do it. Now, in this particular situation, opening that he's going to die soon, yes, you may be true that he's going to die soon. I've actually opened to that myself and it's happened. My, many of you have heard the story around my brother who disappeared and I, when I held the thought I would never see him again and he's going to die, I opened and it was true. I did not see him alive again and he did die, um, got lost up in the mountains and died of dehydration. And that thought opened me. The opening and the truth of it allowed me to be strong and present during our search for him and to be able to lead it and to be able to not go into hysterics with others or break down because there was a truth to it that gave me peace even though it was hard. This is the same with your ex-husband. The way you'll treat him, the way you'll think about him, what, will, what could happen in you having this thought could be a miracle. Yes, he may die soon, but also there may be a bunch of things that transpire in you treating him as if he's going to die soon that may change your relationship, and that's what's important, is the energy, the breadcrumb approach of where your thoughts need to lead you in this situation. Also, you're kind of shocked that when you hold the thought, it's not right to have these kinds of thoughts you close, that's not true. It's not about negative thoughts, not about wishing someone would die. It's not, our thoughts are non -jud there's no judgment on our thoughts. It's what we do with our thoughts. It's how we generate our thoughts. Those thoughts that you're having about him dying don't sound awful to me. It doesn't sound like you're wishing death. It sounds to me like you're examining a very painful relationship that creates suffering in your life that you're ready to be rid of. And in that being ready to be rid of it, there's actions that you can take. There's boundaries you can put up. There's things that you can do. So it sounds a little complex, but it really isn't. The truth of the matter is, is that your IGS is guiding you to hold thoughts that will create your divine purpose on this planet. And there's multiple divine purposes, hundreds of thousands of divine purposes, I believe, that you need to do in this lifetime, from smiling at someone to giving someone a book to the bigger things of changing lives, having babies or being an amazing grandparent. So, you know, your IGS is helping you in, along the way to accomplish all of those things and steering you towards how to do it in the most beneficial way truthful, authentic, aligned, divine way. It doesn't have judgments about what is right or wrong like we have put upon ourselves. That's coming from our mind. Those judgments that we hold are coming from our own mind. So if those judgments are not true, it's going to close or open based on what is true for you and in bringing you into alignment with your divine purpose. Does that make sense to you? Your thoughts need to be in alignment with that. And, and the things that are created in your mind may not actually support you in your divine purpose. In fact, many, 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 many times when somebody comes to do the courses with me and they do the stress to happiness makeover program, there's a bunch of things that need to be cleared out from that they collected about themselves and what they're worth and what they can have and what their dreams need to be. They, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be cleared out that isn't true for them and that's keeping them out of their divine purpose. And your IGS will do that for you. That's exactly what it is doing for you. So I hope that helps Miss A. And um, I also hope that your relationship with your ex somehow mends and the suffering lessens in so whatever way that is. I'm sending you that information and that love. If you'd like to find out more, I'm going to be answering more of some of the quandaries that people get in in the next few podcasts and questions about their IGS, some very interesting things. But if you'd like to get them faster, you are more than welcome to go grab my book, best-selling book. Uh, it's in Spanish, Japanese, and English on Amazon. It's called Your Inner GPS, 
Your Inner GPS on Amazon by Zen Cryer to Brooke, and it is a manual on how to use your internal guidance system. You're also welcome to go to zeninamoment.com where we have courses and programs that you can sign up for if you want to work with me directly in learning how to use your IGS. I would love to have you. And as usual, sharing is caring. So please forward this podcast to someone that you know would benefit from it. I love that you're listening. I'm so very happy to have you. I'm honored, actually. And until we get to be together again, know that I am sending you love and blessings.